Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me today back in the old location. Um, I can't remember how long it's been since I've done a video from this spot, which is where I used to always do my videos. Uh, but I can't get in the shed at the moment because Dave's mid-project there. Um, so, had to have another think about where to be. Um, but actually I'm quite pleased because today's vlog is a bit more of a chatty one. I've got lots of bits and pieces that I've been meaning to talk about and to show you and um, yeah, so sort of sitting in here having a chat is probably quite a nice little spot. Uh, public service announcement, I always used to have to say this, this coffee is going nowhere. Do not be distracted by the coffee. I have yet to knock one over, um, yeah. So as I said, lots of bits and pieces and I will start off by saying thank you very much for all the really lovely supportive comments on my last video. Um, and I've got to say that I got something wrong. I was talking about the dress firm Apolline patterns and I said it wasn't massively inclusive size wise and I was wrong. Uh, they are one of those pattern companies that have two size ranges and they do have a more inclusive size range that goes up to uh, I think the biggest size is around about a 60 inch hip um, so yes I couldn't have been more wrong I think it's difficult because I probably looked at my pattern and I would have bought uh, a different sizing band so yes big apologies so any French speakers or anyone who's prepared to give French instructions a go uh, that's looking for that more inclusive size range they've got them over there I will put a link below um, and the other thing I wanted to start off with really is what I'm wearing it's the Seguru set from the Friday Pattern Company uh, it's been incredibly popular in the sewing community so I'm not going to talk about it at length because you've probably heard lots of other people talking about it. Um, I did post a picture of me wearing it uh, probably a few weeks ago when I made it. Um, really, uh, when I saw this <laughs> double gauze in Leon's, my local fabric shop, in this colour I knew that I had to have it <laughs> and I knew it had to be that set or this set in fact yeah really really lovely lovely set to wear yes it's got a crop top but it's cropped at a level that's okay it's I'm quite happy with it anyway um I've loved wearing it in double gauze really because this is such a favorite fabric of mine I've made lots of things over double gauze over the summer um, I just love the fact that you don't have to iron it you don't have to do anything with it you just wash it throw it on the washing line and it's all done just a lovely thing to put on sort of past post um, bath of an evening you know if you're gonna lounge around watching TV or whatever um, yeah it's really nice my husband always says oh you've got your disco outfit on uh, but yeah I just really enjoy wearing it and I have to say I enjoyed wearing it so much that I knew that my oldest daughter would really like it as well and she rarely uh, wears anything that I've made that is beginning to change so I took a punt and I nipped back to Leon's I bought some double gauze in black she's pretty gothy um, and I took a guess at her measurements because she will not give them to me and I made a set in black and I put it in the post to her and got a very excited phone call when she received it she absolutely loved it so it's a really good all-rounder I made a size medium it's got a really good size range it goes up to 7x doesn't sound very nice does it 7x but anyway it goes up to 7x which I think is again 60-ish inch hip and um, the only thing I did was originally the um, top part doesn't overlap it is a little bit revealing um, but there are instructions on a blog post on the website how to overlap it and I overlapped mine by three centimeters I've got a disaster to show you um, and it's let me just grab it oh, my legs are so sore from the gym this morning 
I really love this fabric. I had such high hopes from it. It came from Higgs and Higgs. It's a, a linen and it's clearly a sort of fairly neutral, natural kind of colour. At the bottom of it, it has this... Yeah, I'm really hoping that you can see that. Um, yeah, so it's got this, this lovely sort of embroidery. They're like these little flowery stars that go down to this, yeah, this kind of cut work. I don't know what it's called. Um, anyway, I thought, what fabulous, fabulous um, fabric. It's the sort of thing that you don't see very often. And I thought having it um, tapering down to the hem really would give me a dress that definitely wouldn't look like I'd made it. And so uh, I decided to make my trusty old favourite, possibly uh, my favourite dress, well, my two favourite dresses, I've got two faves, but anyway, one of them is this, and it's the Armadale dress from Stylark. This is now the fourth one I've made. Um, so I just thought, oh, you know, it's an old fave, get the pattern out, just make it up, it'll be great. I did consider dyeing the fabric actually because whilst I love the effect um, at the end I was feeling it was a fairly meh kind of a colour um, but you know I thought maybe I might get some nice buttons to kind of jazz it up a bit. I decided to uh, remove the collar uh, but other than that it is basically an Armadale dress. Why is it a disaster? <laughs> what? It doesn't fit. I don't know what's happened. I just used the pattern I already had. Um, maybe I was slimmer last time I made it, but that doesn't make sense because I can still fit into all versions of this dress that I've made. Um, I don't know whether I was sleeping on the job and I <laughs> used extra seam allowance. I have no idea what's happened. Um, but at the waist, it's a, slight, it's a slightly higher waist, that dress, but at the waist, I can just about get the two edges of fabric to meet, but not to overlap and button down. So, hence me not even putting the buttons on, because the minute I tried it on and realised that, yeah, I literally just threw it in a tantrum. <laughs> And then I had a very strange thing happen to me over the summer, um, certainly the last couple of months, where I came to a conclusion that I didn't actually need any more clothes, any more summer clothes that is. And this was something I was quite dismayed by, um, obviously, because I really enjoy sewing. And I kind of thought, oh, I don't want to just sew things for the sake of it that's not very good but I was genuinely stumped I thought there's nothing I need um, some people might argue that that's been the case for a while um, so I then started begging my children to make things for them now my youngest daughter who is the middle child she uh, mostly over the summer stayed in her university town. She has a job in a really fabulous clothes shop. So we have a really nice time talking clothes now. And when they get, at this time of year, they're getting all the autumn winter things in and we have a look. She tells me which things I'd really like and I have a look through the website. It's fabulous. Um, anyway, <laughs> this is Lola. Um, so what, <laughs> stop distracting me. Right, she's now sitting there. Hopefully she'll stay still. Um, yes, so, uh, my daughter has now become a fabric snob and has realised that a way of getting nicer quality clothes still on a student budget is to get her mother to make them. <laughs> and um, she asked me to make her a dress. So quite difficult to do when um, you're, you know, you can't fit somebody and you can't measure them and all the rest of it. So, um, she gave me her measurements, I sent her a tape measure in the post and um, we chose between us the Kinjarling dress from Waves and Wild because 
It was quite a good one in that it was a style that she liked, but at the same time, pretty oversized, not massively oversized, but doesn't involve much fit. It doesn't have any fastenings. It doesn't have any uh, darts or anything like that. But with me, the page with all the different pattern views on. And as you can see, there are quite a few. Um, but basically, it's a um, grown-on short sleeve with grown-on short sleeves. A bodice with grown-on short sleeves. Uh, two neckline variations. One is a V and one is a round neck. And you've got the option to either bind that or you can have it with a facing. So the facing is provided. There is uh, the option to do have a full bust adjustment, which is already done for you, should you need that. So that's really nice. Fabulous size range. Again, I think it goes up to a size 60-ish inch hip. So really inclusive size range. A uh, couple of different lengths, three different lengths, below the knee, calf and full. Uh, being a younger person, she wanted hers above the knee, so I just guesstimated that seems to be okay um, and there are a couple of pocket options one is the inseam pockets and one is a hip pocket and I think there are ties yes there are ties as well and should you want to do it there is also a child's version of this pattern so you could do the matchy matchy thing um, which needless to say we didn't need because we're both adults and I don't think that she would want a matchy matchy dress with me in a million years um, but it's a really really nice pattern to sew a gathered waist um, so yeah a bit of gathering to do um, but other than that really nice pattern to sew really nice instructions I made it for her from um, some fabric that I'd got from I'm fairly sure it's from Rainbow Fabrics in Kilburn which had like a seersuckery bubbly type texture to it and it's pink and red um, yeah she really really likes it so I'm really pleased with that um, I haven't made anything from Waves and Wild before I'd only heard of them via Sam uh, who has a YouTube channel um, called Frugalissima and I'm fairly sure that on occasion Waves and Wild um, do free sewing pans they've got some free ones on their site there will obviously be a link to this dress in the description box so if you want to go and have a rummage around I'm fairly sure that they've got some free patterns too so then that went down so well that i made her another dress and uh, i could have just done the same one again but i was mindful of the fact that we are slowly heading towards the autumn and that she might want something with sleeves on so but i went for something that had a very similar kind of look to it but with sleeves and this time i did used the meet you there dress again i've got my little doodah uh, the meet you there tiered dress and top from one of my favorite pattern companies ever which is pattern emporium because as you know if you've watched any of my videos before they're a favourite because you get so much for your money with them. There are always a gazillion variations and their instructions are also very good and their size range is very good. They had a really nice little tutorial on how to gather with elastic because this is yet another tiered dress. I say it like that because... I've said before I'm a little bit sick of tiered dresses so these are all the pattern options you've got on this one so you've got a uh, sleeveless or with sleeves I think there were two sleeve lengths but they're a kind of you know a, a, a wide sleeve into an elastic gathered elastic I went for the longer one but um, she did say to me when it gets colder she might just wear something you know like a sort of base layer underneath it um, I showed her this fabric I actually bought it hoping she would love it and then showed her sort of <laughs> keeping my fingers crossed and she did uh, and it's this one with watermelons on and again it was from Rainbow Fabrics bought a lot from them recently because um, Ruan the Yorkshire Sew Girl also has a channel here on YouTube 
Ruan had a code, a discount code. Now I don't know if that's ongoing or whether it was for a certain period of time. Uh, I will link Ruan's channel uh, in the description box and go and have a look and yeah, if she has got an ongoing thing, I'm sure it will be there. Uh, but she certainly did at the time and so I ordered various bits and pieces. Um, and this one with the watermelons on was just perfect because my daughter loves green, just like I do. And when she was little, she loved watermelons. She used to say to me, if it was like sort of December and I was doing the food shop and I'd say to the kids, you know, what do you want me to get? She'd always say, watermelon. Not, not in December. Um, but yeah, she loved it. Didn't use multiple tiers on my version because again, she wanted a fairly shortish length. So I just took the very first tier and added some length to it. And from memory, I think I made it 50 centimetres, but that did include the seam allowance and the hem. Yeah, really nice, really nice pattern. Uh, I'll link it below, it, oh, because it's Pattern Emporium, it will be an affiliate link, which means if you make any purchases through that link, I get a little commission. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. I'm finding having Lola here really distracting. Um, but yes, the other thing I was going to say is I did uh, make my son a shirt as well, and I don't have great photographs of it because I made it in black double gauze and it just didn't photograph very well. Um, but he wanted a shirt that he could wear in the summer, um, but also he is, he's a student, but he's a drummer and he spends a lot of time practicing and uh, doing gigs when they can get them, uh, which is obviously all very hot and sweaty. So a double gauze shirt was, I thought, an inspired idea and he really, really liked it. Um, so I chose the Presley shirt, which is one of the Gertie, Patreon patterns that you get if you sign up to her Patreon. To be honest, it could have been any camp collar um, shirt pattern. There are lots of them out there, especially the big four do them. Um, and yeah, I was really just using it because I had it. I started, I signed up to her Patreon a few months ago now. I just thought I'd see how it went. Um, I had stopped my I always used to have a Birda subscription um, that my mum always gets me as a little thank you for some stuff I do for her. And this year I thought rather than doing Birda, um, oh and that's right, I used to, last year I did Fibre Mood and I stopped that and I thought I'd try doing the Gertie Patreon instead. Um, and whilst vintage isn't really my thing, I had seen a few patterns that I thought might be quite good. and. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd give it a try. But I have to be honest, this month I have cancelled because I'm just not finding myself using them. Um, there are some really, really lovely patterns, but yeah, it's just not really my cup of tea. I have also got a couple of bits of fabric to show you because I am getting very, very excited about autumn. Um, it is my favourite season and every year, in August, I start getting excited about autumn. We are now in September. I have, <laughs> I have even in the past been on holiday abroad planning what I'm going to make for the winter, uh, or certainly for autumn. Um, yeah, I can get a bit previous with autumn because I do. I just love it. I really just love it. I love everything. I love the colours. I love the crispness. I love the fact it hasn't yet got grim like it gets in winter but it's just so beautiful and the light is lovely and everything matches my hair. <laughs> um, yeah, just love it. So I have got a little bit carried away making plans for that. Um, and I have made the Billy trousers from Bella Loves Patterns, but they're gonna be on my next video because otherwise we'll be here forever, uh, but they are coming up. Um, so before I just show you these couple of fabrics, cause I could do with some ideas of patterns so yeah I'll show you those but I did just also 
want to show you these labels that I got. They came all the way from Australia. They are from a company called mollymollyfabrics.com. I just think that they are really, really beautiful. They come in packs of, I think, three different designs per pack and you get two of each design. They are something like $7.50, that's Australian dollars. And we in the UK are usually around about half that-ish. Um, and I seem to remember that the postage wasn't too expensive either. Uh, it took three weeks. I looked on my emails. It took three weeks to arrive here in the UK. Um, I think on her site she says expect four to eight weeks. And I, I think there's something quite nice about ordering something and knowing it'll turn up at some point and be a nice surprise uh, but yeah look I mean I have got this is my little tub of labels I've got loads of them um, partly because I did the Kylie and the Machine advent calendar last year which I believe they are doing again notice they're now calling it a countdown calendar I guess that's so that they can um, yeah justify people buying it at any time of year so you could argue I didn't really need any more but I couldn't resist these. I think they are really, really gorgeous. So shout out to those. And, you know, obviously lots of you are on that side of the world. I seem to have lots of subscribers in Australia and New Zealand. Um, so you're all going into spring as we're talking autumn. Uh, let me show you this fabric. So I've got this from uh, Simply Fabrics in Brixton. And hopefully you can see it's very kind of autumnal colours. It's double-sided, so the reverse looks like that. Hopefully my camera will be picking it up. Um, and I was, I saw it and fell in love with it. I thought that's gonna make a really nice autumn dress. Um, but I was a bit wary because it's described as double gauze and I thought, mm, will I wear double gauze as it gets um, as it gets colder but I took a punt and I ordered it and actually I would say it is double gauze but it's fairly I'm going to say it's fairly thick it's fairly thick for double gauze it's not particularly lightweight and I think actually this will make really nice um, autumn winter dresses but I don't know what to make um, I'm a little bit out of ideas. Uh, there's a bit of me that's hoping that as we're now in September that there will be a whole new load of releases of sewing patterns. Um, I've got three metres of it, so I've got plenty of it. I'm definitely, definitely into the idea of something with a long skirt. Um, I keep hearing people saying that maxi skirts are going to be very much in for this season. And I know all of you that are not tall will be going, oh no, we hate long skirts. Uh, but I really like long skirts. I love a maxi skirt. Swishing around with Doc Martens on. Happy days. So um, I'm definitely into the idea of doing something with a long skirt. But then obviously we can, you know, lengthen any skirt on a dress, can't we? So please, if anyone's um, spotted any dress patterns that you think I might like, let me know. It doesn't have to have sleeves but if it doesn't have sleeves then it needs to have the ability to wear a layer of some you know just a long sleeve t-shirt underneath it uh, to keep warm because I think pretty much everywhere in the world we are all going to be having our heating very low if not on at all uh, because we'll be going bankrupt otherwise so we need to keep nice and warm um, but yeah I mean how fabulous is this and then I bought this also from the same shop which is a poplin and I'd like to make some kind of I'm not going to say a shirt because I genuinely <laughs> don't mean a shirt but some kind of blouse um, I like the colours very much um, yeah but again inspiration is lacking and again, I'm kind of hoping <laughs> that something will pop up in the next few weeks. I was very tempted, and I still might, to make... Um, now, there's a pattern designer, and I can't remember... She's called Vivian something. 
I'll put a title up. And she has a blouse pattern, which I will also put a title up for, which is beautiful. And I'm looking for an excuse to make that. But um, it has a, a round neck and there's a version with a ruffle, which is not me, uh, and a plain version. And then it has a wide sleeve with a kind of, um, you know, when you get like a fold, fold detail on the sleeve and it's really, really pretty. And I really want to make that, but I'm not convinced that with a fabric that has a print as busy as this, that you would ever see that sleeve detail. So um, I feel like that's a bit of a pointless exercise and that that shirt would be, or blouse, would be better off made in something plain or with a very minimal print to it. So again, any kind of blouse patterns that are your kind of top tips or that you think might be my cup of tip, just put that there, uh, let me know. So that would be great. I'm also pleased to have found some activewear fabric. Um, yeah, I found it in Abercarn in Liverpool where I was dropping my son back. Um, because I was trying to, again, if anyone knows the answer to this, please let me know. I've started going to the gym for the last few months and I, I'm not looking to make leggings because I'm a bit scared of making leggings and then, <laughs> you know, you're just in the middle of a squat and a seam going <laughs> um, But I do want to make some tops and what I couldn't work out for the life of me was what fabric to choose because I didn't want a super thick, uh, lycra uh, I don't really lo like how lycra feels and um, yeah so I wanted something that was kind of drapey and but at the same time proper activewear fabric that's going to wick and I just by chance found the activewear section in Abercarns um, a lot of it was prints that weren't really my thing but at least I managed to find this piece uh, which is hopefully you can see it, this kind of teal colour so I'm thrilled, it cost me a whole five pounds. So I'm thrilled to have found that. But I'd love to know, what is this fabric called? What should I be looking for? Um, I don't think it's lycra, but it needs to be wicking. So if anybody knows, please let me know. I am probably, there are quite a few uh, patterns that I like the look of over on Green Style Creations. So I'm probably going to, I've bought a couple of those. I'm probably gonna make some of those. Um, yeah, over the next little while. Oh, last but not least, a couple of things to listen to and to read. Uh, I don't know if any of you enjoy a bit of history, but I do, and so does my oldest daughter. And she recommended to me this book, which is called How to Be a Victorian by Ruth Goodman. And uh, in fact, I I got the audio book uh, because you can sew and listen. What she does is she takes a standard day in the life of a Victorian person and she she looks at you know across the board in terms of um, income levels, across the classes, across people that might have lived in the country side and people that lived in the city. But she takes a standard day from the moment they get up to the moment they go to bed and explains how Victorians lived. There is a lot of stuff about clothes and fashion and sewing and textiles in general. So if any of you are into that kind of thing, you may well enjoy it. I am thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. And the other thing is there's a brilliant uh, series currently on Radio 4, uh, which is also available as a, house, as a housewife. It's because I always think of um, people that used to call Radio 4 Housewives University. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, it's also available as a podcast and it's called Torn. And again, that's about the history of all things and kind of fashion and fabrics. And I've listened to, again, I've been rationing it, two or three episodes on that. Um, but yeah, absolutely fascinating. Nice little snippets. They're like sort of, I don't know, 15 minutes long. So yeah, nice thing to listen to. Again, I'll link it below. All of this will be linked below. So 
I will be back very soon because I am dying to tell you about these uh, Billy trousers from Bella Loves Patterns. Thank you very much everyone. Please if you've got any uh, recommendations for nice dresses for the autumn, blouses that would be great for that kind of super busy fabric um, and if you can tell me what this kind of um, active wear fabric is called please let me know in the comments. I, I yeah I could really do with knowing and obviously if I find the answer I will report back <laughs> okay thank you very much everybody I will speak to you soon bye bye